Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. In the midst of the COVID-19 outbreak, physician's assistant Vanny Mangal spent her days desperately fighting the disease. But when she came home, her battles weren't over. Vanny is a landlord who rents out her first floor apartment, and recently the tenant has stopped paying rent. Even worse, she abuses Vanny, yells and spits at her, and even once flashed her. But Vanny's troubles, horrendous as they are, and the recent COVID eviction moratorium, are not really what I want to talk about. What interests me are Atlanta's dollar stores. But more on that later. For now, if you've been following the news, you are likely familiar with the context of Vanny's story. Yet the CDC COVID eviction moratorium is just one example of the larger concept of real estate moratorium. And this concept has been around for ages, even if it hasn't always made the headlines. So if you are involved in real estate at all, here are the top things you should know. Number one, a moratorium in general is the suspension of an activity or an authorized period of delay or waiting. In the context of real estate, this may include a suspension on building permits, or an authorized delay in the payment of debts or the performances of some other legal obligation. Number two, in the context of a mortgage, a moratorium is a period during which the borrower is not obligated to make payments. It may also refer to a waiting period before the borrower starts making fixed monthly payments. A good example here, though not related to real estate, would be student loans. Most of the time there is a delay between graduation and the date when payments start. But this can also happen in the context of, say, a construction loan. Number three, moratoriums on financial or legal obligations are often a response to a short-term crisis. For instance, in the immediate aftermath of an emergency, a lender or government may provide a forbearance on mortgage payments, as happened during COVID. This means that there is a time period during which the borrower is not required to make mortgage payments although those payments will be owed at the end of the moratorium period. Another example is when insurance companies halt new policies on properties located in specific areas after a natural disaster. And MetLife actually did this in certain Texas counties after an unusual outbreak of wildfires in 2011. Then, of course, most famously, there was the recent eviction moratorium. Number four. An eviction moratorium calls for a temporary halt in evictions, but it's important to note that renters are usually still responsible for paying back rent, fees, and interest that may occur during the period. The moratorium does not absolve anyone from paying their rent. It just means that they cannot be removed from their home during the moratorium period. Number five, of course, the CDC COVID eviction moratorium was the most recent and famous example of this form of moratorium. Most of you are probably familiar with this moratorium, but it was designed to temporarily keep residents in their home to prevent the spread of COVID due to unstable housing situations. The idea here being that if someone is evicted from their home, they may end up in a crowded housing situation, exacerbating the spread of the disease. And like a typical eviction moratorium, an eligible renter could not be evicted due to non-payment of rent for a certain time period. But again, no one was absolved from paying rent, and any back rent would still eventually be owed. And the moratorium was recently overturned by the Supreme Court on August 26. Now, we mentioned Vanny's story at the beginning of this video, which was one perspective on the eviction moratorium. Of course, there is a whole nother side to what was going on during this time period. Also consider Lakia Higby, who contracted COVID while working at an Amazon warehouse and wasn't able to work for a month. But even after she recovered from the worst effects of COVID, she started suffering from seizures and only the eviction moratorium prevented her from ending up on the street with her children due to the adverse effects she experienced from COVID. So the eviction moratorium was a very important lifeline for thousands, if not millions of tenants across the U.S. Number six, while the COVID eviction moratorium is the most famous and most heartrending example of moratoriums in real estate, it is actually somewhat of an outlier. The majority of moratoriums in a real estate context have more to do with halting the construction of a project or projects. And you will see these kinds of moratoriums occur often, even if they don't make the headlines. So a building moratorium is when construction is halted on a project. This is usually done at the city or town level. For example, a town may issue a building permit and construction may start, 
but over the course of construction, an environmental issue may be found, such as the presence of an endangered species or contaminated rock. At this point, construction may be halted until a resolution may be found for the environmental issue. Alternatively, construction on a project may be halted when unsafe conditions are found at the construction site. Instances where workers may not be consistently using harnesses or even wearing hard hats on the construction site. Courts may also impose a moratorium after a group of concerned citizens files a motion to stop the construction of a project. Of course, there must be a valid concern behind this for the court to impose the moratorium. Number seven, the release of a temporary moratorium on a project is usually dependent on certain terms. An inspection is usually required by a city-improved inspector to verify that whatever concern initiated the moratorium has been resolved. There may also be payment required to the city or town for the expenses incurred while city employees worked on the project and an analysis of reports written to other city departments or agencies explaining why construction should commence. And finally, if fault is found with the contractor or developer, there could be a fine imposed. And number eight, a city or town may also impose a moratorium on the construction of a particular kind of building or land use. A very common example here is a moratorium on the issuance of new liquor licenses. But this brings us back to the story that I really wanted to talk about in today's video. And that is Atlanta's dollar store moratorium. Just before the CDC eviction moratorium was making headlines in 2020, the dollar store moratorium went into effect in DeKalb County, just to the east of Atlanta. The county had recently seen a proliferation of these stores, which offer all kinds of products, but not fresh fruit and vegetables. Out of concern, the county enacted a temporary moratorium at the end of 2019 to give researchers time to analyze the effects of dollar stores on low-income communities. This temporary moratorium has since been extended four times. Advocates of the moratorium believe dollar stores outcompete regular grocery stores and locally owned convenience stores, reducing the selection of healthy food in low-income communities. Not to mention that the stores often look shabby. Alternatively, critics of the moratorium suggest that preventing the construction of dollar stores will not in itself improve health outcomes in the community and may harm residents who rely on the dollar store's cheap prices to afford food. As one public health official said, if the politicians think that if they have no dollar stores, then the grocery stores will come, I think they're fooling themselves. Yet either way, DeKalb County is not alone. Toledo, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Fort Worth, Cleveland, and Birmingham, to name a few, are all either considering or have passed dollar store moratoriums as well. And the dollar store moratorium is certainly not the only of its kind. Long before COVID, moratoriums have been placed on all kinds of land uses deemed noxious. From polluting manufacturing plants to gambling rooms and strip clubs or dumping grounds often championed by local residents who are living with the negative consequences of these uses, moratoriums are never simple. And the difficult questions of how to address these health concerns while protecting private property rights is where the interesting work lies. But what do you think? Do you have any thoughts on real estate moratoriums? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.